Hey guys, we are back updating the Power Kings for the Amazing Race 35 following episode 4. And this was a pretty standard episode for the most part, although there are some pretty interesting results to get into here that we'll talk about more in a moment. But there are 11 teams to talk about, and let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. So starting off at number 11, we have the boots from this week. And here we have Jocelyn and Victor. And obviously, this completed their downfall here. Again, having won the first two legs, only to fall all the way to last place here. Now, they weren't technically in last for a lot of the leg, where they were, again, second to last to start the detour. They actually managed to jump up to ninth place by the end of the detour. However, the roadblock really did them in where other teams were able to come in, able to finish it faster until ultimately they were obviously in last place and they are eliminated from the race. And they're another team that falls into this group of people that went from first to last. And it's obviously a shame as I did like them quite a bit, but they're out of the race now, which is why they're here at number 11. And with that, there are 10 teams left in the race to talk about, and I'll be ranking them based on how likely they are to win based off their edit as well as their current race position. But number 10, the team that I believe is the least likely to win from this point is Andrea and Milena. Now, Andrea and Milena had a pretty interesting leg here, where obviously they started off in the back of the pack, and they were even the last team to finish the detour. However, they're able to build a bit of a comeback here due to their performance on the roadblock where they got a bit lucky there and through that they're able to jump all the way to seventh place which is obviously how they finish here obviously it's a somewhat impressive finish but at the same time like i feel like the roadblock itself is kind of fluky as we saw by certain other teams where a lot of it can kind of come down to luck depending on which uh which thing you got as well as how close you happen to be and how much you were looking so there's definitely a bit of luck involved there so i'm not that overly impressed by their finish here but again i feel like they're a team that's been relatively under edited and a team that i don't find that impressive at the end of the day which is why they're here at number 10. now moving on to number nine and we have another team that i feel like has kind of fallen from grace a bit and here we have morgan and lena who obviously ended up finishing second to last year which is really funny considering that they obviously used their express pass here. They didn't start off this episode in the worst spot. They were in sixth place. And while they did do all right on the detour, they obviously struggled a lot on the roadblock, causing them to fall all the way to second to last year. Again, not a super impressive run here. And again, I feel like this leg just was not that great of a look for them. I wouldn't be surprised if they are not able to recover from the situation unless they get lucky with equalizers. But again, as it is, I feel like they're probably one of the less likely teams to win, which is why they're here at number nine. Now moving on to number eight, and we actually have a team that really struggled on the roadblock as well, causing them to fall quite a bit. And here we have Joel and Garrett. And Joel and Garrett are kind of like Jocelyn and Victor here in that they had a bit of a downfall in this episode, starting off this episode in second place, even like remaining in second place through the end of the detour and up to the start of the roadblock. However, again, they kind of struggled on the roadblock, allowing other teams to come in, beat them, until they fall all the way to ninth place. A pretty dramatic fall, if you ask me. And I feel like that's pretty indicative of them as racers. I feel like they're probably a team that, like I said, if they're able to get into a strong position, I'm not entirely sure how well they'll be able to hold it up, as we saw here, which is why they're here at number eight. Now I'm moving on to number seven, and we have a team that obviously did very well on this leg, though how much of that is their own skill. And here we have Robin and Chelsea, who obviously end up winning the leg here after spending most of it, like of this episode, around the fifth or sixth place spot. However, they're one of these teams that get incredibly lucky during the roadblock, where they're able to come in, find their own pattern relatively quickly, and through that end up winning the leg. A really ridiculous turn of events here. And they even got a bit of personal content here, though I suspect a lot of that is due to the fact that they ended up winning the leg here, more so than them being true contenders. So I found their placement a bit hard to consider, if you ask me. But again, they will be starting off the next leg in the top of the pack, and who knows how they'll do in that position. But I feel like based off their overall edit, barring this episode, I feel like I'm not that impressed by them, and I feel like we'll need to see more from them. But for now, I did decide to put them here at number 7. Now moving on to number six, and this is another team that I kind of struggled with as I had them pretty low for a lot of the season. However, I feel this episode was okay enough for them, and here we have Liam and Jeremy, 
And straight up, I thought coming into this episode that they were going to be eliminated. We did see their spike in personal content talking about how they didn't always get along and that how they're now trying their best to be underdogs. And for me, I felt like this was going to be like, OK, they're going to try to make a push here, but ultimately come up short. However, they actually did kind of well on the roadblock here where they were able to go from ninth place all the way up to sixth place, which is where they finished. They're now in the middle of the pack. And again, I feel like based off this episode, considering that they're not actually out of the race, it makes me think that they could be like these group of likable underdogs to a degree. Maybe like they'll be able to hang around for a bit. But ultimately, I just don't really see how they win the race. I could see them just coming up short towards the end of it. And in general, I feel like they're not a very consistent team, which is why I have them here at number six. Now moving on to number five, and we have a team that I continue to remain middling on. And here we have Greg and John, who actually managed to be one of the more consistent teams across this leg, starting off in eighth place and remaining there through the end of the detour. They do manage to remain in that six to eight spot for the rest of the leg, ultimately finishing in eighth place. Again, not the best finish in the world, but again, they didn't have the same collapse as other teams. And I feel like they're a team that are probably going to be in it a bit more than the teams we already talked about. I feel like they're probably a team that I have more faith in recovering from this, but I still feel like they're probably not built to actually win the race, which is why they're here at number five. Now moving on to number four, and we have a very interesting team and a team that I feel like reminds me a lot of Greg and John, but here we have Joe and Ian. And obviously Joe and Ian have had a bit of an up and down race here so far. However, they end up being one of the better off teams here, starting off in seventh place, remaining in that spot through the start of the roadblock. However, they're one of these teams that are able to get through the roadblock pretty quickly, jumping up to fourth place to finish off. And again, I feel like Joe and Ian have been established now to be pretty interesting characters on this season. Now, I do think Liam and Jeremy are kind of vying for the same spot as him, where they are like seen as like this underdog scrappy team. I could see Liam and Jeremy taking up that spot. But I feel like for now, I feel like I'm more impressed by Joe and Ian's performance across the race, which is why they're here at number four. I'm moving on to number three, and we actually had the same top three as last week. However, the order did change slightly. But at number three, we do have Steve and Anna Lee, who obviously have a very solid right leg here, starting off in first place, remaining in that spot through the roadblock. However, they ultimately get leapfrogged by Robin and Chelsea, who just kind of waltz in and find their thing right away. So they do ultimately finish in second place by the end of it. But I still find them to be a pretty strong team, obviously have really gotten into their own across like the race at this point. And one surprising that they continue to be strong contenders in the future, which is why they're here at number three. Now moving on to number two, and it's a bit of a shame that this team is where they are, but I feel like I do have to reflect that to a degree in their placement here. And here we have Rob and Corey, who obviously you know, like didn't have the best leg here. I mean, they did start off in third place and they were able to hold that through the roadblock. However, they did kind of fall a little bit behind during the roadblock, obviously as other teams passed them where they ended up going from fourth place to fifth place. So again, not the worst dramatic decline in the world, but again, they did ultimately finish worse here. This is the their worst finish to date. And I do still have faith that they can recover from this. I still feel like they're going to be one of the better teams across the season. However, I am starting to see a particular team as a more likely winner at the end of the day than Robin Corey. They'll have to see how it plays out in the coming episodes. But for now, I did decide to bump them down to number two. And now at number one, the team that I believe is the most likely to win the amazing race right now is Todd and Ashley. And I feel like a lot of that just simply comes down to placement, where obviously they do finish in third place while Robin Corey finish in fifth. However, I could also see a world where Robin Corey, like they're this team that is billed to be this big threat down the stretch but which allows other teams to either gang up on them or start to frame themselves as underdogs in the story that allow them to come out on top. I could see it going a number of ways for Robin Corey, which does present a bit of doubt for me. However, I feel like if Robin Corey will ultimately come up short, I feel like Todd and Ashley seem the most likely to overtake them by the end of it, both in terms of their current race performance, as well as their edit, making that in, which is why I had them here at number one. 
And there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Really has out the channel. And I'll be back again next week to update the Power Rankings again, so you can stay tuned for that. I am still covering Big Brother 25 as well as Survivor 45, so you can expect weekly Power Rankings of those shows. I am now on Patreon, so if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And if you haven't already, you can also join the Discord server by also clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way, but for now, that is the video. See ya.